Good evening and welcome to, for the final time in the regular season to the Pinkin Show, our dedicated Norwich City shenanigans that just knew what was coming on Saturday or Sunday even. Uh, I'm Michael Bailey. We are here at the Woolpack Public House in the centre of Norwich and over the next 30 minutes or so we will round up Sunday's Aula at the hands of Wednesday and the entire season of course. Rejoice at the strength of James Madison's knee and glimpse into our crystal balls as the usual summer circus approaches and we will do all of this in the company of those here at the pub plus a top duo of the King of Spain, ex-Canaries, cult hero Simon Lappin. I mean, you're still a cult hero, really, Simon. And proud, <laughs> proud Canaries, Di Cunningham. Uh, guys, thanks so much for coming in. How are you doing? Di, are you well? Yeah, good, thank you. Lovely to see you. I'm liking your blouse as well. It's very nice, eh? So I'm looking dapper as always. Thanks, mate, and yourself, I have to say. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Very much uh, great to have you both on. Very excited about this. Uh, we are live at Pinkin.com and the Pinkin Facebook page. We want to hear from you, of course, be it on that tricky last Sunday. Your questions for laps, uh, but especially your standout moment of the season, be it good or or bad you can tell us all those uh, through to us here uh, simply post your words on the Facebook page and they will ping straight through uh, to my iPhone that is the plan Tom Hill come on lads we'll take that for now will we die honorary lad I'm happy exactly um, uh, now uh, we must reveal that Wesley uh, Moulahan, uh, like her namesake is also out of contract this summer talks have started over extending her stay but our budget uh, means we're going to have to be creative over how we make it happen in the meantime enjoy her while she's with us here are ready to die look at this this week's Norwich City headlines the prayer mats worked Months on the sidelines were feared, but thankfully Norwich City got good news today. James Madison doesn't need surgery on his knee and should be back early in pre-season. Brilliant. Now everyone can get back to fretting about whether he'll be sold or not. I don't like... Oh, do oh, La laps on to go, laps on to go. I don't like Sundays, uh, especially when they involve Wednesdays and an end of season thrashing. It was probably the worst case scenario for the Canaries and still leaves some big questions to address during the summer. Laps! Well, you just punched it. A Dan in demand. God, that's good. Uh, Farker's stock in Germany earns him a place on Eintracht Frankfurt's long list for their new manager. With City's head coach due out of contract next summer, there could well be a bigger picture to the speculation as well. Pride of Anglia! City's under-16s made a mockery of the final championship picture by earning a 1-0 win over the Ipswich Town counterparts to lift the Hospital Cup at Carrow Road last night. Clearly the defining measure of East Anglian dominance. And finally... Living in the past. This isn't another Ipswich topic, honest. Norwich City Legends' inaugural match against Inter Forever is on Sunday week at Carrow Road. There are going to be some big names on show and City Squad will now be managed by Mike Walker. All proceeds are going towards Community Sports Foundation's Build the Nest project. So if you're missing your football, get yourself along. Well done, guys. That was, that was consummate. I like that very much. Uh, it has been a busy week, so uh, let's get Sunday out of our systems uh, first, Die, uh, Horrible way to end the season, that. I'm really glad I didn't go. <laughs> That's a terrible thing to say, and I have been to a few away matches this season, but that must have just been attritional for the folk who went. And it just is so disappointing when we want to feel good about next season. And after the Leeds game as well. I mean, this is really weird because we kind of, I kind of knew this was coming. It, it felt like it. And, and when you're in that situation as a player, Simon, so, mean, it must be that last game with nothing riding on, it must be really hard to motivate yourself. So. Yeah, as it's different if you've had a successful season. I remember, um, obviously, the years that we managed to get promoted. And I think it's been well documented that uh, it was trying to get sober players on the pitch for the last <laughs> game of the season, which is the biggest problem. But when there's nothing to play for, um, as you see, after the Leeds result die and the big send off for Wes and everything, it's disappointing getting that result and getting into the final game um, and getting a bit of a doing. Um, 5 1 it wouldn't sit well with them, um, and you need to get into the summer looking at that, but you need to look forward. You need to look forward to next season now and move on from it. I mean, we, we spend a lot of time going on about how games come round quickly in the Championship, so getting hammered 5 1 on the last day is not really the best timing because you've got a lot, long time to stew on it. I mean, Norwich. <laughs> 
I didn't feel like it was a no-show. Norwich did well. The problem is they seem to make goal scoring look really hard and they give away goals as gifts. I mean, it's not an ideal situation. And, and they've done it infrequently. It's not been the case all season, but has popped up once or twice. It kind of sums the season up in a way, doesn't it? Obviously not that dramatically, but yeah, a shortage of, shortage of goals and, uh, and, and insecure at the back. And maybe unable to change things mid-game. As that has, seems to have been a problem as well during the during the year. We've got to be uh, thankful for James Madison's knee, Simon, because I, I, there's all sorts of theories about where it is with James, whether it's his own career, Norwich's summer transfer pot, or just having the young man fit, which is what I think everyone wants. That's the key thing. He's had a phenomenal season, hasn't he? Exactly. First and foremost, Michael, as you say, it's, it's about a lad. Um, nobody likes to see anybody picking up a nasty injury that can keep them out long term. So first and foremost, I think everybody's delighted that it's not as bad as first fear for him. Um, inevitably, people now turn to the other uh, issue and say that he's fit. Well, what kind of money are they going to get for him which is down to what he's done this season he's been player of the year PFA Championship Team of the Year all these kind of things and rightly so any times that I've seen him he's been absolutely outstanding uh, the one player he would say along with Wes that could uh, turn a game in, in an instant that can do something to, to change a game to win a game so all the accolades that have came his way rightly so but um It'll be interesting to see how long they, if they can, hold on to him. And what's amazing is that he wasn't injured earlier in the season. Uh, he he just been absolutely attacked every game, hasn't he? Just from niggling to full-on kicks. And he he rides the tattles amazingly well. So I, I was just quite astonished that it hadn't happened until that last game this season. That's a great point because his, the state of his Achilles, I think after those voices again, the amount of times he's had studs rake down them, has been quite frightening. Uh, you never had that? It's because you're too quick for them, too quick for them, Simon. Um, <laughs> um, in terms of the Daniel Farker speculation as well, I want to just bring this up. I think you know, it's a couple of, we don't necessarily think he's headed off to Eintracht Frankfurt anytime soon. It seems like a quite a long list. And I mean, Daniel's clear. He have Morrison's <laughs> car park. I mean, he's he's clear. Yeah, this equivalent. I mean, he he's clearly highly rated in Germany, more so than probably here. Likewise, there's a lot invested in him, but he's only got a year left on his current contract, and I would imagine the club would want to extend that. I can't see him choosing to go back to Germany, having dipped his toe in the water in in the in the UK. I, I think he's got a real appetite for the championship. It took, it took him a while to get used to it. Um, hopefully he's got an appetite for more than the championship, actually. Hopefully he's got an appetite for the Premier League. That would be good. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Right, let's have a look at what you guys uh, are saying. Simon Meadows, Sunday should be best described um, performance-wise as shambolic and shameful. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, Joe McKenzie, good news on Madders. Barry Newman, standout moment, performance result and Madders and goal away at Middlesbrough. Di, were you at Middlesbrough? No, I wasn't at Middlesbrough. It was Tuesday night, wasn't it? it was. Yeah. It was a long old poke for a Tuesday night lab. It was a great day. You were there. I can, I can remember. I was doing it. Yeah. Um, and the goal was unbelievable. As you remember, and everybody's seen. And it was almost like a, a back to the wall performance. They were sitting in it and trying to catch them on the break. And again, just as we talked about it before, James Madison changed the game in an instant with that unbelievable strike. So. But um, it was a long old drive back from there. I can remember that. That's what I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't blame me. Um, let's have a look what else we've got here. Uh, Tom Hill, honestly, do you think Madison will go? A question I ask all three of you. I personally think he will leave in January. In January? Oh, with a loan back option. I think that's more possible now, but I, I think Norwich need to sell him for the money. Die. I think he needs to go for his career. Good point. I, I think that's a good point because ha, is there a point where a player like that is he ready to step on? Because I guess some people think you might need James a little bit more time at Norwich, but then he might think I've done mid-table championship and I want to kick on. It all depends where he goes. If he goes uh, first and foremost, uh, what club it is? Is he going to play, get an opportunity to play there, or is he going to sign for that club and, and send him back out on loan to con continue his development? Obviously, he said he showed he's more than capable of playing at Championship level this season, um, but. Until somebody meets Norwich City's valuation of him, then he's, he's a Norwich City player. And 
we'll just need a bit and see how, how it unfolds. He's going to be a Norwich City. If he stays next season or even until January, he's going to be playing with players with, with less kudos than he's been playing this year because Norwich City are going to be losing and already lost some, some key players. He's not going to be, you know, he, he gave a fantastic testament to Wes, didn't he? He's not going to be playing with Wes. He's going to be playing mainly with youngsters, uh, people way less experienced than, than he is uh, or skilled than he is. So I, I, I just can't see it being a good thing for him. Brilliant. Good discuss- certainly good discussion. We're going to be talking... Hey, we'd all love him still in an Orange shirt next year. That goes without saying. Uh, now, you can take in all our post-match videos from the weekend, including my video verdict at pinken.com. That it's also includes the post-match reaction of Daniel Farker and much more besides. But uh, clearly, attention is already focusing tightly on what happens uh, across the summer. Di, what expectations have you got, maybe away from James Madison, in terms of comings and goings? Because I think Daniel doesn't want too much work to be done, yet you know the club's got quite a bit to adjust to again. Yeah, it was interesting getting my um, team of the season ready for you, and because quite a few of them are going to be gone or have already gone. Um, and you clearly need a, a good centre-forward, and we clearly need a, a replacement for Gunny. And we've got, obviously, there's, there's Remy, but... You know, we need to we need to sort those things out. Um, I'm, I've been so encouraged this season by um, some of their uh, their new German signings, um, and loads of them have improved through through the season. So and and great to see um, Hernandez as well. Um, so you know, maybe not that much has to change, but we need someone who can score goals. So hopefully a good amount of the Madison money will, will go there. There's obviously a lot of trust in the re- recruitment process. And I mean, Simon, when you were at Norwich, Paul Lambert was kind of renowned for basically taking seven guys pretty much out of the squad and, and developing it each time. I mean, he said it was giving the guys a hand, but it was really a proper proper turnover each season. Yeah, I think it's a case in most clubs, Michael. Every summer there's a, a revolving door and people coming and going. I, I think they'll need to get bodies in, I really do. Um, it's just the amount that are going to be going in the summer. And... Maybe I'm been a bit biased because I'm older, but I think you need experience. If they're going to do anything next season, they need a spine of the team that's experienced in the championship. You see any club that does well in the championship, they have that throughout their team. But um, someone say you can't do it with kids once. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that um, at all. But um, I do think that you need a spine of the team to be to know the league, to know what they're going into, know what to expect. A lot of lads, and fair play to them, coming from Germany, it was it's completely new to them. It took them a little bit of time to adjust and adapt, and they managed to do that. But if you can get people in that know the league, um, I think it gives you a real good chance. I mean, it's, well, you say if they want to do anything in the league next year, I mean, what should they realistically be expecting? Because, I mean, we'll look later on at the teams that are coming down. There's going to be a lot of money. Norwich probably going to be dwarfed in terms of resources by a lot of teams next year. Well, it was spoke about at the start of this season, the whole period of change, big transition, and, and, it, and it has been that cutting their cloth accordingly more now. And I think it, is, it needs to be a real sense of realism in, in what they're going to achieve next season. If, if they're cutting budgets and, and cutting playing squad and things, it's not realistic that they're going to be up there challenging. Obviously, we would love them to be, but I think when you look at this season as well, we've managed to do that, cut the budget and get rid of higher earners, etc., and finish mid-table. It's almost what you would expect to have happened, given that at the start of the season. So next season... Is it going to, I don't know, is it going to be a finishing mid-table seen as a success again when it really isn't? But in a period of change, it, it might be seen as success. So, I mean, Di, you'll have your season ticket next year. What are you hoping to see next year? Because people feel this will be the season to, to put in a challenge after last year. Who knows, though? I mean, you know, who expected Cardiff to do well this season? So... Money isn't everything. Um, m- management's really important. And we still don't really know about Farker. My feeling is that he's he's improved as a manager, and I'm, qu- I'm quietly confident that he's going to be able to manage a team that will compete well in the championship next season said like a true diplomat I love that (laughs) Um, Simon Meadows uh, Daniel Farker needs to have a serious think about how he is playing the team the possession based side to side tippy tapper one up front is not working Uh, Neil Austin standout moment for the season for me was being part of the 9,000 ish yellers at Arsenal almost taking them 
top support, top performance, albeit against a second string Arsenal team. It was a, one of the better days of the season, most definitely. Daniel Farker masks. Feels like a long time ago that does. Uh, Lisa Jack, just want to th uh, take the chance to say a big thank you. Oh, to me, Osage, and Paddy and the Archon team. Well, thank you very much, Lisa. And, Re and the Radio Norfolk guys as well. Everyone gets a sterling job. That includes you, Simon. You've done a few Radio Norfolk commentaries, haven't you, this year? Um, thank you, Lisa. That's lovely of you. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, Barry Newman playing this system and style of play can only see us having similar results next season. Possession football and squad rotation has not worked. Cardiff have done it, mixing it up and, and, and having a regular team. Arguably, Norwich have a better squad. It's an interesting point in terms of styles. We'll definitely get onto that later. Neil Austin, Madder's most fouled in player in the championship 147 times. Die, point, point stands. Uh, right, let's move on for a little bit, shall we? Uh, you may have noticed that there has been uh, something of a season-long project going on throughout Norwich City's home games, the results of which are now being proudly displayed until the weekend, and I went to check it all out. You may have noticed Norwich City have done something slightly different this season with their match day program covers, a series of stirring images put together by a host of artists, and it's made quite the impact. This is Matt from Patterns of Play. Matt, you put this all together. How on earth did it come about? Um, the club approached us at the start of the season, just wanting to work together on a project. Um, and we kind of met up and got chatting about what we could do. And the programme cover seemed like an obvious choice, really, um, given that there's um, obviously 24 over the course of the season. And kind of we like to showcase different artists. So um, the idea of showing a different artist on every cover was kind of a perfect fit. Started off as a little germ of an idea to have an artist on the cover instead of the usual photography. Then it became an idea to have a different artist for each programme and then we found out about the local art studio, football art studio, Patterns of Play and it seemed to make sense and it's gone so much better than I thought it would. With art, it's, it's obviously all subjective, uh, the risk is there's going to be a few duds but I think all 23 of them have been amazing this season. This is Rebecca Pymar, she's a Norwich artist and you were one of the guys who got commissioned to do one of the covers. I did, how, um, yeah. How did you come up with your design? Um, well, I, I'm really into like, like kind of architecture, so um, usually I, I like to illustrate piers and beach huts, um, anything that's got like a good perspective on it. And um, Caro Road, well, a football stadium, just like lends itself really well to my style. And that must make it lovely that you've got a, a whole exhibition set up to show them off. Yeah, exactly. That was always the idea at the start as well. In my head, I wanted to showcase all of the artwork together as an exhibition because it's, it's it, you know, it gives justice to the artists really um, who have spent so much time and, and, and hard work on each piece um, just to get together, celebrate it all in one place, um, kind of wrap the whole thing up really nicely. Are you a football fan yourself? Yeah, I am. Yeah, like, I I actually used to play a lot of football when I was younger. Um, I'm a Leeds United supporter. Okay. So I'm not a Norwich. Cut the interview supporter. there. That's right. <laughs> My nan is a massive Norwich City Football Club uh, supporter, so she was like one of my main inspirations when I kind of heard about the project. She yeah. must be really proud that you were a part of it then. Yeah, no, she's really over the moon, yeah. I've got to ask everyone, have you, have you got a favourite? Uh, yes, the one of Carra Road, which is sort of a block print of Carra Road by I think Rebecca Palmer. Like I've had loads of people like email me saying that they want a print or that they love the work. Um, even today I got some uh, sketches back from a teacher who'd showed it to his pupils and they've all done their own um, kind of Art Deco inspired sports posters as a school project. So that was like really, really cool. Football programmes, match day programmes, kind of in the news at the moment, which we, we don't always say because if the EFL clubs are going to vote on whether they have to be mandatorily produced by yeah. clubs. What do you reckon? Are you still going to make a programme even if you don't have to? Yeah, Norris City will definitely make a programme. Um, a, on a base level, it still makes money for the club. Uh, it still sells really healthily, but more importantly than that, it's still a really good communication tool to have with the fan base on a match day as well. And of course, the big question now, what, what's the big follow-up going to be next season? Are you going to be involved next season? Um, as it stands, I, I don't know what the plan is for next season. Um, so you might have to ask um, Dan Brigham at the club about that and see what, what their plans are. Um, I mean, we've had so much fun doing the project this season. Um, I know that there'd be artists interested um, for next season. I've, I've had a lot of submissions over the course of the year, which has been great. 
Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, uh, yeah, question for the club maybe. Yeah, don't don't worry. We'll ask Dan. We'll ask Dan. <laughs> yeah. Matt, well done. Thank top you top very top, much. Top player. Cheers. It's a rod for our own back. Uh, <laughs> me and Matt from Passing to Play are going to sit down and talk about how we can collaborate next season. It's gone so much better than we ever expected this year. Uh, we want to do something slightly different, I think, but we do want to retain that sort of feel of using the, a, a local community art studio to do it, but with a slightly different uh, flavour to what it has been this season. The exhibition of all match day covers is open in the Castle Mall and it runs until Saturday, May the 12th. Right, for the final time this season, let's get stuck into this. Yes, it's Flip the Bird when last time out an untidy no. clash saw Nathan Tuck pip Steve Foley 5-4, taking him level with the former City first team coach in our standings. The flamboyant Steve Cook and metronomic Richard Ball still lead the standings. Simon and Di are now tasked with knocking them off their perch. And in a last minute development, because this is the last time we're probably going to do it this year, I'm playing too. I don't know why I've decided to say that. Practice it I, I, no, I've, <laughs> I've watched a lot. I've watched a lot. And oh, now we'll find out I can't kick it. Uh, and uh, Dave Powell's here. Um, you can do the commentary if you want, Dave. Oh, Just even don't hold the mic too close to you. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, where are we? So, we've got 30 seconds to flip as many beer mats as possible. Uh, Dan will time us. Uh, the winner gets a much prized selfie with Wesley Moulahan. Woo! Everyone's excited about that. Uh, unless there's something else they prefer in the wool pack and they're giving it away, I don't know. Uh, so, um, Dan's going to count us down. Dave, you, uh, you, I'll hand you over to your MC. Hold it there, hold it there. Hold it, hold it here. Where I am. Where I'm. Where I'm holding it. Let go. Let go. There you go. That's it. I'm not going to get in your way now. So talk into it. Not Hello. too close. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah right. We can hear Dan's raving. Right. Are you ready, ready? Michael? One, two, three, go. Oh, nice work, Diane. You got. Yeah. Pick one up. Oh, Mr. Lapping. Yes. That's it. Quick. Quicker than that. That's it. Away we go. Oh, look at Mr. Bailey. He's been watching too many. He's taken six at a time here. Ah! How are we doing for time? How are we doing for time? Someone on the 30 seconds. Yes! Oh, look at this. Look. Oh, come on, Michael. You can do it. Oh, yes. Let's go. He's done it. I think Michael smashed it. Oh, God. That's embarrassing. Awesome. Right. No. What we got? How many we got here, Diane? Four, and I the uh, Simon's oh. got four. And he folded one in half. That's Diane's good. got. How many have we got, Diane? Five. And Mr. Bailey. Oh, Eleven. Twelve. Twelve. That's embarrassing. Wow. Have you sneaked it on the last day of the season? Yeah, well, let's just. Thank you very much, Dave. Um, we we'll maybe have to. Do in the afternoon. <laughs> we'll maybe have to. I don't think it would go that well. But well done, everyone. I know what I'm doing Saturday night now. I'm going round my local to, to practice that. <laughs> uh, the, the best bit is we can uh, do it all again next season and everyone can improve on their scores. I'll never do it again. Don't worry. Uh, right, after all that excitement, um, we're going to have a chat with these guys in a bit. We're just going to have a chat with Simon and, uh, and uh, Di first, if I may. Um, Simon, now you're here, we've got to talk to you about Lynn. I'm absolutely, absolutely gutted on Monday, so near and yet. And yet, so far, does the pain subside or is it still there? No, it's one of them, Michael, that it doesn't matter the level of football, it's the same principles. And when we went home on Monday night, and yeah, I got absolutely gutted about it. I think, I spoke to Ian yesterday and, and he was talking about it as well, and I think the more disappointing thing is we never played anywhere near the way we have all season on Monday. Uh, the one game that we didn't really get to our levels uh, for whatever reason um, Was it nerves or no, end of the season? I, I, do you know what I don't think the boys were really calm the manager kept everybody calm before the game died it wasn't um, I don't think the occasion got to anybody it wasn't like that it was a great crowd, uh, crowd great atmosphere one thing I will say it was absolutely stifling hot as, as you both know on Monday um, both teams were out on their feet uh, by the 90th minute and it was to concede in the 89th minute a poor goal from our point of view is uh, it's a horrible, it's cruel, it's, it is, football can be cruel at times, um, and they conceding the 89th minute was horrible. I mean, you have a whole season of work coming down to that last moment, I mean, and a phenomenal season too, and I'm, I'm sort of, a lot's obviously been talked about Ian Culverhouse, but how much of an impact did he have on making that happen? Unbelievable. Um, you know who he is, he'd be the first one to praise the players, I think if you asked any of the players, 
it'd be opposite way around. All the credit goes to him because what he's went in and done there. Um, and installed it, the professionalism, the group, the group they assembled, and the way they got them playing. Uh, it's, it's got a buzz around the town, um, getting the crowds back through the gates, which is which is a club like that needs. Um, and all, all credit to him for doing that. I, I knew what I was going into. He, he was the reason that I went there. Uh, same with Grant when he was there. Bring some really exciting players in as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, he brought in Ryan Jarvis, who, who's been probably their best player this season as well. He had Grant Holt for a day. It was longer than a day, though. It was two days. Uh, so he almost got banned, didn't he? Or he had to save a ban in the time he was there. No, but even with Grant, he got an opportunity to go into a higher level. So you can't hold it. anybody in the same position the same, but going back to the manager, it, it was, it's been unbelievable there, um, and he was the reason that myself and Grant went along there. Knowing fine well, he assembled a great group of lads, um, and it was a pleasure to play in the dressing room this season. It really was. Which of course all leads on to the inevitable next question. We know Ian's leaving. Cameron Norman said he's leaving as, as well, and we don't know what the shape of Lim will be next season, who the new manager will be. But Simon, what, what are you going to do next year? The same, but I'm in the dark about what's happening, um, and I just need to see what happens over the summer. Um, I'll be kept busy with working with the foundation um, and coaching and getting ready for for next summer. Uh, but in terms of football, we just need to wait and see and play it by year. We will see. We'll have a good summer anyway. All the best and things. Um, Di, I'm going to talk to Nick about uh, the Proud Canaries Cup because that seemed to go really, really well on, on, on Saturday. But, I mean, did you take it in? Were you, you pleased with it? I had to make, make myself take it in. It was such a fantastic opportunity to be on the Carrow pitch uh, with Amal Fashionu there and um, watching 10 different teams of LGBT players and allies playing and really enjoying themselves. I think everybody managed to take it in, which is, which is fantastic. And... It is fantastic because a lot of people coming up to me beforehand. There's obviously a, a lot of very excited people about the cup, and it, I'm sure it'll keep it'll keep going in future and be a, a regular event. Um, people will feel there's been a lot of progress, won't they, in in, in terms of um, homophobia and transphobia and, and it, you know not being not existing in football, not being prevalent in football. Yet at the same token, we had the um, the leaflets being handed out at Wembley ahead of the Women's FA Cup final. We've had a little bit of abuse exchange on Twitter in the last few days. It, just sort of underlines that this, there's still quite a bit of work to do, isn't there? Yeah, I think, I mean, you just can't feel complacent about any kind of inclusion. Uh, but still, racism raises its, its ugly head, doesn't it? And um, we hear uh, racist abuse on occasion in the stands and uh, see it online as well. So um, it's really important that clubs like Norwich keep on doing what they're doing and um, the Community Sports Foundation as well, uh, doing some fantastic stuff, just getting the message across at grassroots and at uh, elite level that homophobia, transphobia, any kind of LGBT phobia is just not tolerated. So um, Keep up the good work, Di, most definitely. Right, uh, Dan, you ready for a walk? He, he looks sort of ready, Dan. Uh, Dan is going to uh, come and uh, make sure we can speak to these guys here now. Um, so we're gonna do that. Thank you, Di. Beautiful. Not knit knocker. Uh, you guys can just chat and uh, chat with uh, Wesley Moulahan in the meantime, if you if you wish. She's, yeah, we well, can steal her if you want. Yeah, um, she might do it. Uh, who have we got? We, uh, let's have a chat with Ian. Uh, Nick, let's come to you first. We've yes. just spoken to to Di. Come come around here. Um, this is Nick O'Brien. Should I stand? Um, yeah, no problem. Yeah. What's your role at Proud Canaries again? Remind me. Well, I don't have a role. Um, I thought like, you were like so, chairman so, or something. No, no. Sometimes oh. sometimes football player. <laughs> as you were on Saturday. Yes, that's now, right. Now, yeah. how did the event go? Because as I was saying today, a lot of buzz around it. It, it went like really well. Portrait. So there were loads and loads of teams. People came from all over the country, London, Bristol. I'm a team from Charlton, QPR. So it was really well attended. Um, it was really hot. Like the, <laughs> To play four matches of football was pretty massive. Um, but no, it went well. We had three teams, three Proud Canaries teams. Um, we had an A team that got to the semi-final and we had two other teams that were competitive. That's, that's good enough. Yes. Brilliant. Who won? Um, so the winning team were Birmingham Blades um, and they were very good. But they're very good. <laughs> and they've been around <laughs> a while. <laughs> um, in, in the games I played, we were, we were good in all of them apart from against Stonewall FC and we got a bit of a chasing. But... Um, yeah, it was all right. No charity You've got to, in the You've got to take game. it sometimes. I love it. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much yeah. for coming along, Nick. Um, no uh, just in terms of the summer, is there anything you're particularly hoping for in terms of Norwich City? Well, it's got to be a striker, isn't it, really? So Any ideas who they should sign? It's always 
I mean, I don't. So. Well, no, not really. <laughs> Just um, it, it's difficult, isn't it? But um, no, I think a striker. I'm glad that Teddy's staying. It will give a bit of stability to the midfield. Um, and maybe a more creative player. So you know, if Madison goes, which I think he probably will, then you know, a number ten to replace him. So a number ten and a striker. I think you know we're pretty much there. It's just goals. It's just and goals. It's just it? goals. Just, just goals. But it's the hardest thing, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Brilliant. Well, thanks for coming along. Nick. No problem. Enjoy yourselves. Thanks. Good to see you. Well done on Saturday, uh, Mr. Powell. Come along as you did your star commentary turn. Um, and Ian, Ian, do you want to join us as well? Yeah. yeah. As, let's see if uh, Dan can work work the camera. He's still smiling, Dan. So that's all right. Come nice and tucked in. Nice and tucked in. Um, Not too close to him. Here we go. It's Ian Mitten, Dave Powell, uh, oh. renowned Norwich fans. I'm going to label you as uh, <laughs> today. Uh, Dave, uh, the, the only question I've got written here is: Are you angry? No. No, the season's I mean, finished. I mean, this season, I would have thought it would have angered you. I'll let you know about 20 to 10 tonight whether I'm angry after um, you've probably smashed us. Yeah, it's so the Forces to Canaries game at Carrow Road uh, tonight. Um, I'm on one team, Dave's managing the other. Um, what, what are you hoping from your side tonight, Dave? Score goals, probably. More than what score, there has been at Carrow Road all goals. season. <laughs> score more goals than you lot, yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. It's like watching Norwich then, basically. That's no, I'm not angry, no. Season's finished now, thank God. Sheffield Wednesday, though, oh dear, nightmare. I, what, and in terms of looking ahead to next season, are you, are you remotely hopeful? I mean, where do you well, see? What, what are your expectations? If you, if you for next remember season? what I said at Mill uh, when I was on here when before we played Millwall away, unlikely. I said that we'd finish between eighth and tenth. I was a little bit wrong. So next season, maybe sixth to eighth. Okay, raising the bar. Raising the bar, just a little bit. Okay, well we'll take that most definitely. Uh, Ian, let's have a chat yeah. with you because um, uh, thanks for joining us and a partner of Michelle Dacke, who we sadly lost this year. Yes. I mean, you, you must be overwhelmed by the tributes you've had. We had the Norwich City naming the fans Sorry, of the season man. award after the Shell as well. So many things. Blown away. Blown away by all of it. From, from the very first tweet where I felt I just had to let people know because we had stuff on Twitter that was the adventures of on an away day. And the response was just, it, it was mind-blowing, genuinely. Um, the, the first game afterwards with that, the, minutes, the minutes applause, which I managed to get through okay. And what normally happens at the end of that is obviously a big come on and we get back into it. And of course, the Barkley burst into the most passionate on the ball city I've ever heard, which that, that was it. That, that, that blew me. And I mean, we, we, we talk a lot about football clubs in terms of, you know, results, finance, success and all this sort of things. But I suppose they're, they're more the moments where everyone seems to come together. Yeah, yeah it did. It, it brought it all together and, and it just it just it gave a little bit more to, to just what a club we've got here. There's something special here. It is a special one. It's a cliche, but it is a special one. And you can see, I certainly felt that from, from, from what happened, from the response to what happened. And I've had people just come up to me at games since then, at away games, people I've never met, you know, who, who sort of recognise me. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of put some light in the darkness, if you like. I bet. I, can, I completely understand. Um, and you've got a big event coming up on Friday week, isn't it? Yes, Friday week um, at the station, railway station. We've got basically it's a it's a fundraiser. Um, there's going to be music. We're hopeful for some some ex City players coming up to make a, an appearance. We've got well Simon Lappin's here, so have a, a cake word. sale. <laughs> I'm going to have a word. Yeah, there's a cake sale. We're just looking to raise some money for sarcoma. Um, sarcoma is what took Michelle from us. It's it's a very rare form of bone and soft tissue cancer, and it, it doesn't get the recognition because it's so rare. Um, so we just want to get some awareness out there so that people go, sarcoma, you know what, I've heard of that. Because no one had. We hadn't. When we got the diagnosis, we'd never heard of it. Um, and it's particular, because it's so, so rare, this particular one was, was very aggressive. And it, it took her from, uh, from there might be something bad to losing her in 82 days. Because the symptoms just aren't there, aren't recognisable. So we want to raise a lot of awareness, as well as trying to raise some cash for them as well, Brilliant. basically. So, so that's yeah, that's, Friday, that's week. Friday week at the railway station, 11 till 4. Come on down, say hello, chuck some money in, buy a cake. Yeah. <laughs> what else is to what do? Else, what else can you do? Uh, yeah. Ian, thanks so much for joining no us. Problem. Really appreciate Pleasure. it. Pleasure. And uh, we'll enjoy the game tonight. Um, we'll, try. <laughs> we'll try, yeah. Uh, brilliant stuff. Right, let's go, let's go back, shall we, Dan? We'll, we'll let Dan um, come back. Uh, let's... It's exciting. Maneuvered, successful. Well done. What lovely guys. Uh, uh, yeah, later. Yeah, later. I've got a reputation. I've got a reputation to uphold. That's the problem. Uh, let's have a look at just a couple more of your questions, shall we, while we're here, and I'll let Dan reposition himself in his little seat. Um, 
Jay Sadler, can I have a beer? Well, no, same answer as Simon, I'm afraid. Uh, this season has been embarrassing to finish below Ipswich, but I'm willing to give Farker until Christmas to prove himself and get us on a winning ways. Uh, I don't mind the loss here and there, but can't be losing to teams below us and give the teams above a good fight. Need change urgently, but that's in the board. Uh, Carl Hawes, bring back Simon Laffin. Too right, too right. Experience we're talking about. We have been calling and you might be available in the summer, so yeah, it's all, it's all filling in. Well, maybe a few years too. Right? <laughs> oh, maybe. Um, oh, uh, Niall Austin. Uh, Neil Austin, has your CV gone in for the Linnets yet? As manager? No. Would you fancy it? No. <laughs> Football management, coaching? Ever? I want to play as long as I can, Michael. Anybody that I speak to that's retired, they all say the same thing, play as long as you can, and that's what I want to do. And, when it comes to a point that I can't get around the park anymore or I, I, I'm not wanted anywhere, then I'll, I'll think about that then. Keep, watch this face. <laughs> uh, Tom Hill, it sounds like you really think Madison will jump ship straight away. I can't see him going in the summer. He seems genuinely grateful for everything he has at Norwich. Uh, uh, Lisa Jack, favourite moment of the season, Radio Suffolk, Brenna Woolley on Closer Equaliser. As I, we had Chris and Rob on, on here, I'm actually on the scrimmage uh, tomorrow night, which I'm looking forward to, uh, BBC Radio Norfolk, 6pm. Um, yeah, I just think that commentary is so iconic and that's no criticism of Brenna because he delivered exactly what every Ipswich town would have been th- fan would have been thinking at that moment that's what makes it uh, such an iconic piece of commentary uh, and Lorn Smybert the season is ended the players cross their fingers to see if they will be still here in August fans take a big breath who do you think the new striker will be and do you think who will be German yes or play, playing in Germany at least uh, right the season is done as Lord Smybert just said so uh, let's have a look at how the championship finished and guys you can have a look to with the slides lovingly crafted there we go Birmingham's win at St Andrews kept the Blues safe while ending Fulham's automatic promotion hopes both teams did enough in Cardiff for promotion and survival respectively while it was a similar story at Portman Road Aaron Wilbraham was Bolton's saviour as Burton and Barnsley suffered painful defeats uh, remarkably Sunderland were the only side Wolves failed to beat and score against all season what a stat that is uh, That stopped uh, Wolves reaching 100 points, but not really anything else. Cardiff broke 90, while Derby again proved that 75 generally gets you into the top six. Alec Niels Preston missed out by a couple of points and a few goals. Sheffield United and Bristol City were the sides in free fall since the new year, while Ipswich claimed 12th. Fulham take on Derby and it's Villa Borough when the playoffs kick off on Friday. Uh, in fact, in the battle for 12th, Norwich took 14th, uh, still closer to the top six than the bottom three. Sunderland, Burton and Barnsley were all relegated. And as we already know, City will head to West Brom and Stoke next year and most likely Swansea too if Huddersfield pick up a point from their remaining two games. Wigan and Blackburn have already been promoted from League One with Shrewsbury, Rotherham, Scunthorpe and Charlton battling for the remaining spot to join them. And for those who like a date in their diary, fixtures for the 2018-19 EFL Championship season Season will be revealed on Thursday the 21st of June at 9 a.m. Feels like a long time away now. <laughs> I can assure you it won't be by the time it comes around. Aaron Wilbraham, Simon, you played with him here. Um, I don't know if you saw his tribute, his part of the tribute video for Wes, but he was on an incredible sofa. Uh, I don't know if that's played a, played a part in, in, in him basically keeping Bolton up. Remarkable. He's 30, 37, 38. Yeah, unbelievable. And it just shows you how professional he is to look after himself for, for so long. Since so long, he's only a year or two older than me. Um, but delighted for him. He was a great guy when he was here. Um, <laughs> and you would think he was 21, the way he acts in the dressing room. Great, <laughs> brilliant lad in the dressing room. Um, and all credit to him. He's, he went to Bristol City and he obviously had a, a big impact there. And, and he's going to Bolton now using his experience. I'm sure he's, he's getting around the younger players in the team. And delighted for him to come up with the goal that kept him up. Um, as I say, he's a, he's a top lad and, and well done to him. He's going to remember that for a long time, I think. Uh, in terms of the division, it, it's felt quite strong this year. I know people normally say, oh, it's been the worst championship season I've ever seen. But I don't, I don't agree. I think it's been quite strong. And I kind of feel it might be might be stronger next year as well, Di. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be really interesting um, playing, uh, uh, scrapping with West Brom. There's going to be some scrapping teams, aren't there? Um, Norwich love playing those. So that'll be good. <laughs> Dear. Um, and... Yeah, I, it's interesting. I, I'm trying to remember what my predictions were for promotion, and none of the teams that I predicted to do well 
did apart from Cardiff, actually. Oh, good call. I didn't. I didn't you would be one of the few ones who saw that coming. I, I thought both Sheffield teams would do well, and um, Bristol, Bristol as well, and um, yeah. So and Brentford, I thought. So Brent, Brentford have had a fantastic season. I think the biggest shock for everybody is Sunderland coming out of the Premier League two, two relegations in a row it's, for a club that size it's an absolute disaster but um, you look at Cardiff getting promoted there as you say Di, like you tipped them for, for playoffs but I don't think anybody would have expected Cardiff for automatic promotion but Neil Warnock I think he's a record holder for promotions yeah, so made somebody been there and done that again we go back to somebody that, that knows the league and he's managed to go out on numerous occasions and, and yet again uh, the strange story today as well, the, the tabloid, uh, I think it was the Daily Mail or someone, reporting that um, Steve McLaren is going to become QPR boss, which, uh, given Ian Holloway's still manager, <laughs> don't really know. But there, there we go. Um, you know, maybe Holloway for Ipswich, who are, of course, still looking for a new boss themselves. Uh, right, what else we got here? Will Butler, die. should we start a campaign to get one of the stands at Carrow Road named after Justin Fashnu? That's a great idea. Um, I know um, a few people at Capital Canaries have suggested that as well in the past, and um, it's a great idea. The, the other thing we'd really like to see is a Justin statue. Maybe it oh, doesn't matter where in Norwich, it would be great at Carrow Road, but maybe in the city as well. But um, yeah, it's definitely something to talk, talk to the club about. Watch the space, watch the space. Uh, Will Butler adds, Simon, what tactics always suited your style of play and do you think Farker's tactics of playing through the middle work? What tactics suited my style of play? Um, pressing high up the park and <laughs> to go and try and win the game. Um, get the ball to the better players in the team who can create something and play in their final third. Um, the games that I've saw this season, I think, as we touched on earlier, that a lot of it was side to side and side to side but not really going anywhere um, not moving it side to side in terms of to open them up where then you can play in between the opposition um, it was a lot of side to side side to side keeping the ball going back getting into the final third turning out of the final third instead of getting into the final third getting half a yard and getting the ball in the box because once you put the ball in the box anything can happen I can't remember what game I think it might have been Forest at home I was at as well and the amount of times they got into the final third, both sides, and instead of putting the ball in the, in the box, they turned out, tried to work on opening, tried to get James Madison on the ball. Um, whereas the teams that are played in, that's, that's what we did. We tried to, to move the ball side to side quickly, in terms of, uh, with the purpose, sorry, of um, opening them up to them, play into West Hulahan, into Grant Hall, these kind of players, they can go and do something. But if the ball was wide, the strikers and the midfielders from the other side knew the ball was going in the box. The, the, the thing it's felt for me is that the ball has moved a lot, but the players don't. Yeah. It's like the, they allow the ball to do the work without maybe moving around themselves and making runs. It's that lack of movement, I think, has been an issue. Yeah, and if, uh, teams will be happy if everything's in front of them. If I'm playing and the ball's in front of you, there's nothing going in between you, everything's going down the outside, you're happy. Um, and I think a lot of the time teams come to Carroll Road will be thinking well, we're all right here they're not really hurting us here um, the ball's in front of them all the time there's no real penetration and even now even at Lynn this season you talk about turning teams for the first 10-15 minutes of the game to get you further up the park to then go and play in their half um, and it, Especially in the championship, if you do that, you, you will get further up the park if you do it properly and, and play in the right areas of the pitch. The time, really, also, the time we did see that, and it was very brief, wasn't it? It was um, the Pritchard Madison combo, and it was just lovely to see. And it was kind of, it led to false hope, really. That we could have possession football and incisive passing and fantastic movement. Because, I mean, those two guys were just fantastic, beautiful to watch, weren't they? Yeah. About four games we got of <laughs> those two. That's never it. mind, yeah, never mind. Birmingham away, yeah, I remember. I mean, they did lose to Brentford with them as well, but there we go. Uh, right, uh, Alan Monument, standout moment for me was Ipswich away, left home at 5 a.m., over five hour drive, Madison's goal and victory over that lot. 16 hour day, but worth every second. I assume you didn't travel from Norwich. <laughs> but great yeah, stuff. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, on a tractor, A140, that'll do it. Um, uh, what have we got? Uh, uh, Nathan Stork, proud of you, Ian. That's a lovely, uh, lovely tribute to, uh, to Ian there, Nathan. Top stuff. And uh, Lawn Smyber, do you want everyone at the club to go like most of the fans? Oh, the, what, most of the fans that are pathetic and have no vision for the future. 
Lawn's not happy. Lawn's not happy. Uh, right. Season is over for Norwich City. It has been pretty erratic. Uh, highlights, lowlights, standout moments for you guys. Di, what, what's the one thing that sticks in your mind from this year? One th- Am I only allowed one? I mean, there are t- we've already mentioned so two many of them. So in Arsenal and uh, equaliser against Ipswich. And Chelsea was just amazing. I was uh, behind a g- the goal for the um, for the equaliser in the was it the 87th, the 89th minute? Uh, your just... 94th minute, I mean, ridiculous. I mean, we'd all, we were all packing up, <laughs> to yes, be honest. Yes, no, it was. It was an extra, yes, big pardon. And um, so the cross from Closer, a header from Lewis, and it was it was as good, I think, as being at Wembley for the for the playoff final. There was That's something about that game being um, on the BBC as well, live, that everyone was watching it, I think, for that moment. Was, so was my like... coach, when we, when we got back to the coach, the driver was taking great joy in telling everyone that um, somebody on the coach had left before <laughs> left in the 93rd minute and had gone back to the coach and so they're on the there's coach. never a reason to leave a game early <laughs> thank you <laughs> unbelievable unbelievable uh, how about you Simon I mean I know you obviously were busy for yeah, a lot of the season as well most sad these, but I think um, they send off our ways it was only fitting um, having played with them and, and, and shared a dressing room with them um, shared a bed with them for, and on a Christmas night out when I woke up with a, a leprechaun tucking into my back <laughs> the biggest leprechaun head you've ever seen and I've turned around he was tucking into me um, so that, that was wow. uh, that was that was uh, probably the best Christmas night out we've ever had actually um, but the, se- the send off that you got it was only fitting to, to the service that you gave to the club I mean what a player um, I think if you asked him that played with him he, he's one of the best I've ever came across and I'm no different um, it was a joy to, to, to share a dressing room with as I say and, and to watch him play um, it was our job to get the ball back at times give it to him and talk about people who can go and create things at times you just in training and things you would, you would laugh at some of the things they would do because you're thinking that's, that's just unbelievable what we could do with the ball so I think that was um, one of the highlights for, for me um, spot on stand out me a moment of the season undoubtedly what a Norwich City legend I'm already missing him uh, right uh, let's get uh, a quick look at some teams of the season shall we um, first of all let's have a look at this one down it's the who scored.com 11 if we can uh, now this was the most common formation and therefore the highest rated that said Norwich with three at the back um, did have a slightly better record I mean really random Steeperman at left back and he's not a left back uh, no Grant Hanley no Alex Tetty uh, rather random really but there we go that's what stats do for you so I'm more excited to see Dai's team yeah <laughs> let's have a look at Dai's team shall we get that quite straight, straight back on that's, that's the question though, stats, that's stats. I, I kind of muddled the formation because I guess this was roughly what you were thinking, but the, the three at the back, I mean, Tim Closer for me, unsung hero of the season. I, I know the other people got a lot of views, but I, I keep saying it, Tim Closer. I was torn, I was torn about inc- uh, including Tim, but the the cross at Chelsea, at Stamford Bridge and, and the equaliser, he's got to be in there, isn't he? Uh, Cameron Jerome in there as well, Di. Do you know what? At one point, in fact, I misremembered. I thought I had sent this in without a centre forward. <laughs> well, some would argue. No, no. <laughs> I love Cam. Uh, I, so I was going to have Murphy as centre forward. But I thought, oh, come on, you're going to do it properly. So there is centre forward. I, I, I just think Oliveira has, even in his heyday at Fulham, uh, when you know back in the day when he's scoring goals, he was really stroppy and he's not a team player. And so um, I think my uh, fellow proud canary Nick has said on Twitter that he's he'll start crowdfunding for a taxi to take all of you. What a way to end the show! There we go. That's the last point. Poor old Nelson. His heart was always in the right place. I'll say that much. Uh, we're done. Uh, that is this, uh, us from tonight and for the regular season, in fact. Uh, remember, you can watch uh, all of this show and all our superb Norwich City content over at the Pinkham Facebook page, Pinkham YouTube channel, but first and foremost, Pinkham.com. Thanks to all the crew this season, both on Mustard TV and on our da- Pinkham channels, especially Dan, who's <laughs> carried things, and Sean. <laughs> Six points down, yeah, literally lying on the floor. 
Um, uh, to Darren Eady, Jake Watson, Ryan Livermore, and all my sidekicks since August. To uh, Simon and Di for coming in tonight. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, as well as all our guests throughout a stellar season for the show. To everyone here at the Woolpack uh, for being so accommodating over the last few months. Uh, as well as to Coach and Horses and Fat Cats and Canary too. To Norwich City Football Club for letting us uh, pitch up at Carroll Road a few times. That was good. And of course, to all you guys and girls out there for watching, getting involved, telling us your views, your stories, and our asking your questions. Uh, this season may be done for Norwich City, but you won't have to wait until August to see us again. Uh, we'll be popping up with uh, some special Pinkin shows throughout the summer, hopefully with some special and important guests too. Let's try it. Uh, in the meantime, catch the sun, take a break, and think of all those wonderful erratic moments we've witnessed over the last 10 months. Uh, from good to bad, they are all the reason why we come back for more. Good night. <laughs>